So my name is Cody McCain. I am a product manager for the IPU. I focus on what kinds of solutions, software solutions, can we build on top of the SDK and all these other components that, that we've kind of covered today. And uh, I've drawn the short straw to challenge the uh, demo dragons. And, and a matter of fact, we're going to try to challenge them in under 20 minutes. So we'll see how that goes. Um, my background has actually been in Kubernetes over the last 10 years. So I've, I've focused uh, heavily on container networking and I focused on um, you know, how do we um, move packets in and out of containers and the higher order workloads. And so now we're kind of merging that path all the way down into the IPU because again, it's both compute and a network path uh, accelerator for us. So let's get into our, our, our first demo here. Um, we've been working very closely with uh, several of our um, ISVs, uh, one in particular uh, with Red Hat. And what we really like about this demo is it's illustrating the fact that we can bring Kubernetes uh, not only to the host and, ex and offload uh, networking functionality, but we can bring Kubernetes onto the IPU. And what that allows us to do is if you can you know, imagine uh, Kubernetes workloads that are running on the host that need to use something like SRIOV, for example, and I want to bring a network function to that host. So, so this is kind of a change in thought about how network functions are working in a distributed world, right? Traditionally, if I had a network function either hosted by an appliance or on a virtual machine, what I would want to do is I want to steer traffic to that network function, apply some type of behavior and steer the traffic back. But that doesn't really horizontally scale, right? That's a vertical scaling model. And what we really want to do is we want to bring the network function behavior to the workload, right? And what better way to do that is bring it onto the IPU because now I don't have to task my CPU to implement that behavior. I can offload it down on to the IPU. And so what this demo is, is effectively doing is showing some very, very simple ways in where we can containerize a network function, deploy it onto the IPU, and actually do all the processing in the um, ARM core that we have on the IPU. Now, future demos uh, will also program uh, the FXP. I think we had a question earlier about, you know, what is that? What is the speed trade-off, right? When I'm when I'm putting things down onto the to the ARM core, um, we see it kind of two different ways. One way is we may do software processing of that network function, right? So that deeper regex, but we also have deep packet inspection up to 256 bytes, right? On the, on the uh, uh, hardware acceleration side as well. And so in those cases, this network function really just becomes a control plane, right? Where we are updating what we're scanning for or what we're, you know, how we're wanting to uh, action the packets that we're, that we're matching um, with the um, ARM core that's on the IPU, right? So we can use it in both ways. So let's go ahead and jump into the demo here. So to set that up, let me, uh, let me explain kind of what we're doing here. Um, we are working closely with Red Hat, and they have, in, in Kubernetes, there is a concept of an operator. What an operator essentially does is it provides a, a domain-specific language for configuring something, right? So it's on top of a schema. In Kubernetes, we extend that API with something called a custom resource definition. And then what the DPU operator does is it defines a schema that allows us to use Kubernetes API uh, to specify that I want particular network chains built, network function chains built, and I want to deploy things onto the IPU. It also allows us to have an automated way to detect the IPU and deploy vendor-specific code, right, that can set it up, program it, um, apply those those uh, network functions in the chain to the IPU. And, and we do all of this using OPI, Open Programmable Infrastructure. So essentially underneath the hood in the DPU operator, you have an OPI plugin uh, that's using gRPC and some other mechanisms to communicate back and forth between the operator agents and then what's actually happening in our vendor-specific code to uh, program uh, the IPU. So in this uh, particular demo, what we're going to do is uh, deploy a couple of container workloads on the host. Uh, they're going to use SRIOV. So in this case, we're using the Multi CNI, uh, creating a network attachment definition, all the standard SRIOV stuff that you would see for setting it up. But instead of um, just mapping it directly onto you know out the NIC onto the LAN, we're going to intercept that traffic, and we're going to be able to redirect all the input and 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 uh, 
output of that traffic through a software network function on the IPU. We're going to demonstrate two different network functions, a very, very simple um, observability function that's just going to count packets uh, using AF packet. Um, and then we're also going to have another one that does a firewall type functionality, right? So we're going to either start dropping packets or, or allowing those packets. And we'll show the packet um, throughput using iperf so you can actually see um, that they're interacting. A fun part about this demo, because the IPU is a server, we actually put all of the demo components, you know, the, 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 the uh, uh, observability backends, right, with Grafana and all that, directly on the IPU. So it's actually running on the ARM cores. Now, in a production environment, that would probably run somewhere else, and we would only have the collector agents running on the, on the ARM core and sending that data out via telemetry to somewhere else. Hmm. All right. Now, I may, because of time constraints, I may fast forward through different parts of this, so I'll kind of give you a heads up. But... What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up our worker node. Some very basic things that we have to do is we want to make sure that, hey, is the, is the IPU installed? The nice thing about our partner with Red, Sh with Red Hat rather, is that all of the drivers, the IPDF drivers, are upstreamed out of the box ready in RHEL. So it makes it real simple to go ahead and get it up and running out of the box. The other cool thing that we do, and, and Thomas had alluded to this when he talked about the IMC, right? And this idea of setting up a an operating system on the ARM core. Um, we support Redfish as well. So in this demo, what we're going to do is actually load the RHEL ISO, which is going to be a, a complete ISO. It's going to contain both RHEL and MicroShift. Um, in this demo, we're using MicroShift. We do have plans to move on to full-blown OpenShift as well on the, on the IPU. But, but here, we're using MicroShift. And it, it will load that ISO using um, the Redfish interface. Uh, we go get coffee, come back. <laughs> <laughs> ISO's loaded, ready to go, and, and now we can actually see we're logged into a shell onto the uh, ARM core, and we've got MicroShift installed. Now, the next step here is we've got to set up our vendor-specific OPI plugin. And so um, we actually run the DPU operator both on the host and on the IPU. Now, there's different modes of, of operation in, in terms of thinking about your interaction between the IPU and the host. In this demo, we're actually treating... Um, the host is a trusted host, right? And so, and, and essentially, the IPU has become a peripheral uh, to that host, and we're using the DPU operator intent that we specify to drive the behavior of the IPU. Now, um, in you know future work, what we're going to do is flip that around as well, right? So, in, in an untrusted host model, you might come in and say, "Hey, I want to deploy all of my infrastructure management, Kubernetes and Ceph, onto the IPU." and then use the IPU to drive the configuration from the bottom up into the host, and then that's going to be your trusted execution environment. You can imagine what you can do now with Kubernetes and that control plane on the IPU in terms of managing that host and the way that that host is used. Here, we're just going through. The nice thing about DPU operator is it's written with the operator framework um, in Red Hat. It makes it very easy to go ahead and, and grab that operator and install it, whether that be on the host or on the IPU. On the, on the uh, IPU, we had to do it with the non-graphical way. Here, they're showing that they're using the OpenShift console to go in, install the, uh, the DPU there. So now it's running. We see that it's running. We've got the daemon sets up for the vendor-specific plugin. Um, we're all set to go. So now what we want to do is go ahead and set up our networking. So let me fast forward just a little bit since we're running short on time. I didn't want to go that far. Let's, <laughs> let's see if I can uh, get this to operate correctly. All right. Let's go to about right here. So the, the next step is once we have the DPU operator running, we've got our, our, our OPI plugins it got installed. The daemon sets got installed automatically by the operator that matched the Intel IPU. Um, we've got to set up our worker nodes, right? And, and, and so we, we, we launched two different pods. We set up the network attachment definitions for those pods to get SRIOV working. Um, and once we've done that, then we are basically um, showing here that we've created an SRIOV uh, net device. And the first step that we want to show is pod to pod traffic, right? And so in this, in this case right here, there's no uh, network function that's being applied in the ACC. We've actually programmed our fabric processor to just route all traffic from one pod down into the FXP and back up uh, to the, the VSI and a virtual function interface right back up into the other pod, right? And so in this case, all pod-to-pod uh, -pod traffic in that host is actually being driven through the IPU and the virtual function um, 
um, capabilities there, the, the, the different uh, interface uh, representers. So all this is represented in one host? This is all one host in this. Um, this could easily be extended, though, to multiple hosts. And in that case, um, um, because everything's being driven down to the IPU, right, then we could, then we could enforce, like, an, an interesting thing about going to multiple hosts then is that we could, uh, we could employ other things, like, for example, our IPsec acceleration, right? So we could get, you know, free and transparent IPsec between the host and accelerated um, for only that host-to-host uh, -host traffic, but then, you know, intra-host traffic, you know, would just simply go and, and, and be a, um, a hairpin back into uh, the other container. So here we show that, you know, pod-to-pod uh, -pod traffic is working exactly as we expected it to, right? Um, and is being driven through, through, through the fabric processor. Now, the next step we want to do is um, we want to go ahead and create a, a service function chain. And so the nice thing about using Kubernetes and being able to extend that API, we talked about hey, you know, how is a, an enterprise networking guy going to you know, know the ins and outs of Falcon or they're going to know the ins and outs of whatever network function I want to apply? Well, by using Kubernetes here, we can actually up-level the configuration API, right? Take it up to a higher layer of abstraction that matches the particular network function domain that we're trying to implement, right? Maybe I'm doing um, L7 load balancing. You know, maybe I'm doing some type of filtering, right? And so, by, you know, with Kubernetes, you have things like API Gateway. So some of these things have already kind of been thought through in terms of the L7 uh, traffic management, but there may be other domain-specific things that you want to implement. Putting it up here, then, we can then use things like the DPU operator and these containerized network functions to drive how the FXP, which is our fabric processor, right, is programmed down below, or, or what pieces of software that we need to load on the ACC to make all this magic work. And so what... I really want to get to from a solutions perspective is how do I containerize this end to end so I can provide a marketplace of network functions to bring on to the IPU, but do it in such a way that you don't have to be, you know, a P4 expert to be able to pull this off, right? So that's the that's the direction we're moving, you know, forward with with the, with the software. So here you can see in the demo, I've deployed um, a simple packet counting network function using AF packet. Um, we've output that via Open Telemetry Grafana boom, uh, we can actually see it served up and, and that worked as expected. The next step is we go ahead and, oh, and you notice, here, here's something really interesting I think to point out is if, if you've ever used something like Kubernetes or whatever and, and, and you deploy a pod or you, or you delete that pod, it's, it's just like deploying a container, deleting a container, right? I deploy that container, the DPU operator sees that, hey, there's a new container out there, uh, or, or a new definition CRD, and it and it immediately applies it. So it, it, it's not an imperative thing where I've got to go through and like programming a switch or or you know uh, do, going through all the imperative steps to set this up. I literally say, I want this behavior. We'll let the backend operator actually reconcile the state of everything and then make that behavior um, be applied, and then removing it as as, as a simple as, as as removing it as well. So. Here, we go ahead and deploy this simple firewall. It creates the uh, firewall. Um, it'll, we'll do an iperf just to make sure that, um, for sure, um, are we blocking traffic? Well, let's check this. So we execute the iperf command. And sure enough, it should uh, let it through until we block traffic. What are we running for the firewall, if I may? So this is actually a very simple AF pack. So it's actually just a very uh, simple AF packet uh, uh, program that's just dropping packets uh, that match a particular uh, thing. So it's, you could have like a higher order firewall that you want to put on there and then, and then use the ACC and, and this interface to program that. This is just a very, very simple software demo. So we're doing it all in software. And then finally, we tell it to, uh, you know, we, we blocked um, that, and now we unblock it, and, and, and you see that there's a, um, a change in the network flow, you know, as soon as, as, as we make those changes. And so now it got unblocked, and, and we went on. So I fast-forwarded that. I've only got a few minutes for the other demo. I don't know if we're going to be able to get all the way through it, but let me explain what we're doing in this other demo. And by the way, in the slide deck, um, all the code, everything we're doing is out in the open source on this, so... We want to make sure that you have a chance to go in and, and dig into it and, and, and see exactly what's underneath the covers.